Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am back with another reading. So today's topic is going to be a fun one. We're going to be looking at who is your soulmate. So we have five fat stacks of cards here and what they're going to tell us is basically who is your soulmate, what do they look like, what do they do, what's their personality like, um, what is your relationship going to be like, do you already know them, and whatever else they want to tell us. <laughs> um, so Everybody has multiple soulmates, so if you feel drawn to more than one pile, that's fine. It also could be that your person is going to be a like a combination of two or more of these uh, readings. So basically just listen to whatever options you feel led to and use your own discernment um, when it comes to interpreting the cards for yourself. Okay, so um, we have group one here, which is the... Rose Quartz Pillar. We have Group 2, which is Dalmatian Jasper. Group 3 is Opalite. Group 4 is the Black Fluorite. And Group 5 is Orange Calcite. Okay guys, so I will give you a moment to choose your pile and then we'll get started. Alright, so let me move these other piles of cards out of the way. Okay, pile one. Let's find out who your soulmate is. So the first card that we have here is Full Moon in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle approaches. So right away it's possible that your soulmate is a Capricorn or has Capricorn somewhere predominantly in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, etc. Um, this card also gives me the impression right away that your person is going to be fairly hardworking. Um, I feel like your soulmate is somebody who's a little bit of a workaholic, somebody who just um, is sort of ambitious, somebody who likes to spend time, you know, um, working, making money, um, feeling, <laughs> feeling useful. I feel like they, they, you know, doing work and being of help to other people makes them feel very useful and it kind of makes them feel like they have a purpose in life. We also have emotions are running high. This is the super moon card. So this card talks about like intense feelings. So this could be a sign that your soulmate is someone who is going to be a very emotional person or just somebody who feels emotions very intensely. Um, they could be a little bit possessive of things that they love. They could be a little bit of the jealous type. Um, but I'm not really, I'm not getting that it's, um, to the extent that it would have negative impact on your relationship. Um, we also have the Priestess card. It says, how are you being called to step up and lead? So this is kind of tying into um, the Full Moon and Capricorn card. This is telling me, again, that this is somebody who loves to work, um, somebody who I think is kind of a natural leader, somebody who might enjoy teaching people things, um, and probably somebody who is either self-employed or they have some kind of authority in the workplace, okay? We also have the no card, which is interesting. It says, wait, postpone, pause, say no. Um, what this card is telling me is that your soulmate could be somebody who is a little bit, um, a little bit skeptical of things like just in general I feel like your person your soulmate's kind of a skeptic about you know when it comes to a lot of different things I get the sense that they're a little bit cynical um <coughs> they possibly could be a little bit moody at times with the um the storm here in the background of this card and 
I also feel like that your person might be a little bit resistant to change. They could, you know, really thrive with routine, and I feel like this would be somebody who, you know, change for them is kind of difficult to adapt to. We also have the past life relationship card. So this, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory. We are talking about soulmates. Um, you have known this person before. It's possible that you have met this person in this lifetime before, but I'm not really getting that impression for most of you. I feel like for the majority of you, you don't, you haven't met this person yet in this life. We also have the loyal heart card. This tells me that this is a person who is going to be very loyal, who's going to be kind of like a ride or die kind of partner. <laughs> um, somebody who is going to stick with you no matter what through thick and thin. Somebody who's going to have a lot of love for you. And I feel like this would be somebody who would be difficult to get rid of just because, you know, they're not going to walk out when things get tough. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you might be a little bit anxious at times that your person might you know get sick of sick of the relationship or um want to walk away and and find something new or do something new but i feel like those types of fears are going to be pretty unfounded because this feels like a, an extremely loyal individual somebody who you know it would take a lot to make them walk away from you. Um, we also have the guardian angel card. So this is really cute because this tells me that your soulmate is going to be very protective of you. They're going to want to do everything in their power to keep you safe. They're going to probably be checking up on you like throughout the day, um, especially if well, you know, regardless of whether it's long distance or not, I feel like you probably could expect to get text messages from them, like, periodically throughout the day, just asking how you're doing and how your day is, and, um, I feel like this is the kind of person who, if you, um, are upset about something, they would be very attuned to your emotions and be able to tell when something is wrong, and I feel like if... If somebody upset you, then they would be the type to be like, okay, where are they? So I can go beat them up. Like, <laughs> something like that. Not to say that your person is violent, but, you know, I just feel like they're going to be very, very protective of you. And <laughs> I think that they could be a little bit overbearing sometimes, but I think if that were to happen, I feel like, you know, all, all you would need to do would be to say, uh, you know, I, you're suffocating me a little bit here. <laughs> um, and I think they would understand because I feel like that you probably wouldn't be the first person to tell them that. Um, we also have some tarot cards here. We have the Knight of Swords. We have the Fool. We have Five of Pentacles, the Chariot, and Justice. So, um, the first one I want to talk about here is the Five of Pentacles. This card talks about abandonment sometimes. It can talk about feeling left out in the cold. Um, what this card tells me is that I feel like your person has been abandoned in the past, or they have been uh, either by family members, friends, or partners. And that could be why this is someone who is so loyal, because, like, they know how it feels to be left alone and I also get the sense that they they're gonna want to try to do everything that they can to make themselves useful to you so that you won't walk away from them do you know what I'm saying I get like I get the feeling that they could be nervous that that would happen um and so because they're afraid of being abandoned they kind of try to make up for it by being extremely loyal to to the people that they care about so that you know it, it's kind of like a, a precautionary thing in their mind like you know if i'm always there for this person then they're less likely to leave me you know what i'm saying because i'm you know i'm i'm playing an important part in their life does that make sense um 
Also, with the Knight of Swords, I get the sense that this is someone who just kind of says whatever they're thinking. This is someone who doesn't really sugarcoat things. This is someone who just kind of speaks what speaks what's on their mind, speaks their truth, and they do that regardless of whether uh, it's pleasant. They do that regardless of whether other people are going to like it or not. And um, I feel like that tendency to just speak their truth does kind of land them into trouble sometimes. Um, the Chariot card, again, is emphasizing to me that this is a pretty ambitious person. This is somebody who I think likes to be on the move. Um, someone who, who just kind of always has to be doing something. You know what I'm saying? I, I get the sense that this is somebody who doesn't really spend much time... I, they don't really have a lot of downtime, like, by choice. Um, because I, I, I feel like when they do have downtime, they just feel like they're wasting away. <laughs> they, they're, like, they're, you know, there's gotta be something I can be doing right now. And so they go and find something to do. Um... Like, if they were to take a vacation from work, they might go back to work early just because they're bored. <laughs> um, so, this is really somebody who, um, again, is very ambitious, very active, very honest, and I think with the... Um, with the Justice card being here, I think this is also someone who um, is very fair or who, who strives to be very fair and kind of equalize things for other people. This could be somebody who works in some kind of social work setting or somebody who is just passionate about um, advocating for other people, and that could mean... They could work in some sort of, um, in the legal field in some way, like a lawyer, but not necessarily. They could just work, like, as a, like, a court reporter, something like that, social worker, um, or those could just be things that they're interested in that, that are, like, uh, hobbies, I want to say. Not that, like, law is necessarily a hobby, but just maybe researching law or, like I said, advocating for certain f certain things, certain groups of people. Um, just someone, I think, who is very um, understanding of how the system works and how it treats people, how it treats some people more fairly than, or yeah, how it treats some people more fairly than others. Someone who I think is just very attuned to the indiscrepancies within the system, so to speak. And somebody who I think is, is pretty passionate about like wanting to change that. Does that make sense? Um, I'm also getting... I'm getting dark hair, I'm getting dark eyes, someone who's kind of tall, I think. I want to say they're fairly thin or lean, you know, I'm not seeing, um, I'm not seeing a ton of muscle on this person, uh, not a ton of body fat either, I just, I feel like this is someone who is, like I said, fairly active, um, Dark hair, dark eyes. I want to say their hair is probably kind of curly. And I'm seeing like tan skin. So if I'm, 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 I'm thinking tan because I feel like this is somebody who probably spends a decent amount of time outside. They like to be outside doing stuff. Um, at least when the weather is nice, like in the warmer months. Um, and also with the Fool card being here, I think that they do like to travel um, because the Fool talks about like adventures, going on a, on a brand new adventure. Um, so I feel like this is someone who probably likes to travel, somebody who likes to see new things and have new experiences. But again, they do kind of strive 
or I, th I should say thrive on routine. So it's it's a little bit of a little bit of a balancing act that they, they that they maintain between you know keeping up their routine that that makes them feel comfortable and safe and also you know kind of breaking out every once in a while and um seeking out some kind of new experience okay um so let's see is there anything else that i'm getting from this person Their letter, their their name could start with the letter M. I'm hearing, I'm getting that specifically. Okay, guys. So, um, that's really all I've got for you, pile one. That's that's your that's your soulmate. Um, like I said, some of you I feel like already kind of know this person or you've met them before. If you have though, I feel like they're not really a part of your life right now, but. I want to say that they're probably going to be. Um, you know what? I should actually pull out a timing card for that. See if I can't see if we can't get some idea of the timing for when this person is going to come in or come back, whatever the case may be. When is Pile One's soulmate going to show up? We have a year from now popping up. So um, a year from now, so this could mean that either you will meet this person in approximately one year, or if you already know them, something significant is gonna happen within this connection in about a year, okay? So um, yeah, pile one, that's your reading. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this resonated with you. Um, thanks so much for watching. We're going to move on now to pile number two, which was the Dalmatian Jasper. So let's see, pile two, who your soulmate is. First card that we have here is your commitment is being tested. So right away, I feel like this is a person who is... Honestly, I want to say this is going to be somebody who is probably going to test you in, in various ways. Um, <laughs> um, specifically, I'm hearing, like, testing your patience. Um, the energy that I'm feeling from this person already is a little bit scattered. It's a little bit all over the place. <laughs> um, I think this is going to be a person who might be a little bit difficult to keep up with sometimes. We also have take time to breathe out. So yeah, again, this I feel like this is somebody who's going to be very much on the move a lot. Somebody who's going to be very active. Um, I feel as though this is someone who probably, in terms of their career, they probably haven't made a lot of progress. They might be working um, at a relatively low level position um i because i feel like they jump around a lot they like they get bored or tired of doing the same thing and so they look for something new and so they're they're always just kind of testing out new things okay um we also have pleiades double mission channeling and uplifting humanity so this is someone i think who First of all, I feel like this is someone who's very interested in, like, UFOs and extraterrestrials and that kind of thing. Um, but also, I think this is someone who, in general, is very passionate about just humanity, um, helping other people, helping to uplift humankind, helping people, like, uh, this is somebody who I think is very um, sensitive to others and very much gets gets like very upset about you know when people are wronged like the the idea of like you know hunger and poverty are things that just don't sit well with them things that i think they 
spend a significant amount of time kind of thinking about and like being concerned about you know the fact that there are people out there who are suffering like that's the kind of thing i'm getting like that's the kind of thing that just bothers them on a on a fundamental level um it's just something that they they can't accept and so i feel like this is someone who tries to do things to kind of help other people as, as much as they can like i feel like this is someone who probably donates to charities or you know gives money to like homeless people if they happen to see them on the street um we also have the transformation card things are changing at a cellular level deep healing so again there's this energy of like uplifting transformation transitions um this is a person who is very big picture you know this is somebody who's like okay uh, this is a very specific um like metaphor that i'm i'm being that i'm being given but i'm gonna say it um if your person found okay if your person had like three wishes you know like they found a genie in a bottle and they had three wishes that they could make they would they would wish for something like an end to world hunger um housing for all <laughs> um stuff like that y you know no more climate change you know they just they're they they're very passionate about the well-being of other human beings and humanity in general and they're also very passionate about making the world a better place for future generations so this is someone who i think can be a little bit um neglectful of their own of their self because they're so focused on the bigger picture does that make sense we also have keep an open mind your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations so this could be you know s simply a sign that your soulmate's not going to be your normal type um they might have a different body type they might have um maybe you normally go for you know very straight laced um established like businessmen or whatever and this person's not going to be like that um this person i do feel like is a little bit of a wild child they're kind of a free spirit um so if that's not your usual type then this could be you know something that you're just gonna have to get used to um we also have the thinker card so again this is somebody I think who spends a lot of time in their head. They're very much focused on the bigger picture. And, um, again, I feel like they do neglect themselves a little bit. Their, their own, um, they're more focused on how they can help other people, what they can do for other people than they are on what they can do for themselves. So this is a very giving person. You know, this is a very kind-hearted gentle person and their energy is very sweet it's very pure and wholesome but um you know some of you maybe that's not the, the kind of person that you normally would go for maybe that's not the kind of person that you really um relate to in general but like i feel like with this person it's it's gonna be different because it's gonna be like i don't know something about them is just going to draw you towards them oops we also have the sanctuary card so this card tells me that your soulmate is kind of going to be like a sanctuary to you this person is going to be a safe person for you they're going to give you a sense of security um even though they're a little bit scattered and they're a little bit all over the place you know i do think this would be someone who it's going to be protective of you and going to want to do what they can to help you no matter what. Like, this would be someone who's always going to put you before themselves. Okay. Um, we also have the Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles tells me that this person, like I said, I feel in their own life, their progress has been a bit slow because they they've just been kind of jumping around and trying different things. I get the sense that they don't really have... A clear direction as far as career is concerned um, or like their housing situation they probably still live with like roommates or family or whatever um, 
but they are I mean they they have money, you know. They're they're not like dependent on other people completely. Um they do provide for themselves, but they haven't made as much progress as maybe you would like for your partner to have made, you know what I'm saying? Um, we also have the lover's card. So this card tells me that your person could be a Gemini, um, sun, moon, sun, moon, or rising, um, which kind of goes along with the thinker card because air signs are always in their head. Um, the lover's card is also telling me, again, this person has so much love for, for human beings in general, um, other, other living things. They just, they just, they have so much love in them. They have so much love to give. And I feel like your person has, as, as, um, kind of scattered as, as this person's energy feels, I don't get the sense that they go from partner to partner very easily. I feel like they they do prefer to be in a more committed long-term kind of relationship um and so i do kind of get the sense that this person's been single for a significant period of time um or they will have been single for a significant period of time when you meet them i don't think that you've met them yet um we also have the sun card so <laughs> This is a very light, happy, warm, fuzzy kind of energy. Again, I, I, I do kind of get hippie vibes from your person, to be honest. Um, so this could be somebody who has, like, long hair or piercings, tattoos, possibly. Mm, mm, yeah, maybe a few. Um, but, like, longish hair or, like, dyed hair, like, hair that's not, like, a natural color. Um, like I said, piercings, perhaps. Uh, I kind of get the feeling that somebody, it, there's somebody who maybe wears clothes that, like, have holes in them and stuff, like, clothes that are kind of shredded, but it's fashion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, like, intentional, um, which, like, work, you know? <laughs> um, but we also have temperance. So the Temperance card is about healing, it's about restoration. So this is someone, again, who is just so giving and generous, I think. And somebody who is going to want to give you the world, basically. Um, and also this is a very patient person, I think. And we also have the Four of Pentacles. So the Four of Pentacles does tell me that this person does have some financial stability, you know, even though they are, their career is not their primary focus. Their career is kind of, you know, working is just something that they do so that they can live, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's not what they're passionate about. It's not something that they care about a ton. Um, their passion lies elsewhere. Their passion is other people. Um, but... They do have, they, they are fairly financially, materially stable. Um, so, like I said, I don't think that you guys have met this person just yet. I'm getting like blue eyes, like blue, blue, green eyes with this person. I'm getting kind of pale. <laughs> um, also, I'm, I'm getting something about the water. So this person could like to swim, they could like to do stuff on the water like boating or fishing. Um, we have the forgiveness card, so this tells me that this person is... I just get such a gentle, loving vibe from this person. Um, so someone who would be very forgiving, someone who I think would be kind of, oops, kind of, um, very, very communicative, I think. Like, if, if you and this person had a problem, I feel like they would be very, you know, very much want to sit down and talk about it and discuss what happened, why it happened, how they, how you can fix it, how you can prevent this from happening in the future, that kind of thing. And then, you know, just kind of kiss and make up and move forward. 
Um, I don't see this being somebody who's going to hold grudges um, against anyone. Let's find out when this person might be coming towards you. We have perfect timing. So um, that's not super specific, but it is a confirmation that this is a divinely guided connection and it's going to happen when the time is right. So the impression that I get from this energy is probably like next year sometime. I want to say um, maybe in the spring of next year. Or just, you know, whenever you're watching this, approximately 10 to 12 months from the time you're you're viewing this video. Um, so let's see. I think that's about it for this uh, for this reading, you guys. That's what I've got for you, pile two. That's your soulmate. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a very interesting relationship, but also very. Um, very positive so that's great um i'm excited for y'all all right so i hope that you enjoyed this and i hope i see you next time guys next up we have pile three so for pile three we have the opalite Let's find out who your soulmate is, Pile 3. So the first card we have is interesting. Nothing will come of the situation. Um, so right away, I kind of get the sense that you already know this person. And you've either written them off or you feel like this connection isn't going to go anywhere. Um, and so maybe you've just kind of given up on it and you've moved on, you've walked away. Um, we also have, look at the bigger picture, full moon in Sagittarius. This is telling me that you, yeah, I definitely feel like you guys already know this person, or you've met them before, you have had some kind of experience with this person, and it's like, whatever has happened between you, you feel like it's over, you, you're kind of like, you know, this isn't moving forward the way that I thought it would or that I wanted it to in the time that I wanted it to, and so, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I just need to walk away from it, but it's kind of like, you're getting too, you're being too impatient with this person, I think. This is what this card is telling me, like, you have to kind of step back a little bit and look at the bigger picture. Like, look at your entire life. You know, you have so much time still for this relationship to happen. Just because it hasn't happened in the time frame that you've known this person, that doesn't mean it never will. Um, that's kind of the impression that I'm getting from this. We have the boundaries card. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? This person, I feel like, has possibly distanced themselves um, for personal reasons. I get the sense that they're going through some kind of difficulty right now in their personal life. Um, we also have the Minticon card, Longing for Home, Belonging, the original Lightworkers. I feel like there is, there has been some kind of pain, some, some difficulty in this person's life. Um, I, I specifically I'm getting that somebody special to them somebody important to them has recently passed on and they're kind of in this state of grieving or there's just been some kind of loss in their life that they're trying to deal with um, also we have very soon so this card tells me that this connection, I think, is going to start picking up relatively soon, like within the next couple of months. Um, so, so that's interesting. Um, if you're not in contact with this person, I feel like contact will be reestablished soon, um, within the next few weeks to a few months. 
definitely, I want to say by the end of this year, at, at the latest. We also have flexible, reversed. So this could be a person who is very um, kind of rigid, somebody who is not super adaptable to changes, somebody who is not going to bend to your will. I kind of get the impression that, you know, you were hoping that this relationship would have moved forward and gone somewhere by now, but your person has been like, nope, nope, I'm not ready yet, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give. Um, and so maybe that's why you've decided to, like, walk away. Um, but I think that this, I feel like your person is kind of stubborn, okay? Your person's kind of stubborn. They're very resilient, though. It, it kind of takes a lot to ruffle their feathers, I think. And <laughs> I feel like, um, that's something that is both irritating to you, but you also kind of admire that about them. Um, and I also want to say that if you, if this doesn't sound like a connection that you already have experienced, then this is probably what's going to happen when you meet this person, okay? And if you haven't met them yet, then that meeting is going to happen soon, all right? Um, so, if you haven't met them yet, expect it to be a little bit touch and go at the start. Um, but we also have the beauty card. So this card tells me that your person might be a little bit rough around the edges. They might be a little, um, I want to say kind of distant, kind of not super emotional, but I do feel like this would, this is somebody who is very gentle on the inside, someone who's very caring and compassionate deep down. It's just that they don't really express that a lot. Um, they might like to put on this facade of toughness, you know, um, and, and like, oh, I'm big and bad and scary, but in reality, they're kind of like a teddy bear. Um, Physically, I feel like this is kind of a larger person, like kind of somebody who's probably kind of tall, kind of stocky, well-built. Um, I'm getting like brown, brown hair and possibly hazel or gray eyes. Um, your tarot cards are the Six of Pentacles. We have the Wheel of Fortune. So this card does talk about divine timing. So, again, there's this emphasis on, like, you have to be patient here. Um, because this isn't going to be something that you can rush. Okay? You're going to have to wait for this person to be ready. Um, we have the King of Swords. So, this is, again, that very, you know, kind of just very logical, rational kind of energy. Not super emotional. All right? Um, we have the Four of Cups. This card, <laughs> again, is talking about the fact that it's this relationship's not going to get off on the best start. You know, there's going to be some disappointment initially. There's going to be some conflict, perhaps. A little bit of, you know, hot and cold stuff going on. Um... And, and uncertainty because of that. But we also have the Knight of Wands, which this card is about passion, it's about energy, it's like, um, there's also kind of a sexual energy to this card, so your person could be kind of a sexual uh, individual, somebody who's just, you know, not afraid of, to talk about that kind of thing, somebody who is very in tune with their own sexuality. Um, and also, I feel like when... When this person is ready, this card is an indication that this relationship is going to kind of take off like a rocket, you know, all of a sudden. It's going to be like pretty much at a standstill for a while, but then suddenly, bam, like, it's it's just going to go, it, it's just going to go. <laughs> and you're going to be like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. That was, that was fast. Uh, um, so, and also with the uh, Six of Pentacles, this card talks about reciprocation, balance, stability. So, um, 
what this tells me is that even if you guys go through a period of time where you're not really in contact with each other, things are not going great, I feel like, you know, this is something that's going to persist despite that, if that makes sense. And, you know, initially, like I said, there's going to be a little bit of a an imbalance like somebody's gonna be putting more effort into it than the other person but that's just gonna be because the other person can't because of their own circumstances um, but eventually that will stabilize and that will balance out and it will become more equal so I think that, like I said, this is per somebody who's probably tall, pretty well built, brown hair, blue, or no, gray or hazel eyes, probably, maybe brown. Um, I get the sense that they are not super passionate about their career, but they do have a pretty decent job. They're probably in some kind of uh, authority position in the workplace. Um, they could work with computers or money. They could work in, like, the financial field, like accounting or something like that, or IT. Um, and it's, like I said, it's not something that they're super into, but it pays the bills, <laughs> you know. Um, the reconsider card is falling out. So, again, I feel like there's going to be a, a point within this connection where you're going to feel like, you know, it, maybe it's time to reconsider. Maybe this isn't the person for me. But then I think something's going to happen between the two of you and you're going to have to reconsider that and be like, well, maybe this is the person for me. Um, so let's find out. Well, actually, we've already kind of gotten, you know, a um, an estimate on the timing. So I don't really think I need to pull any more cards. Um, like I said, if you haven't met this person yet, it's going to happen within the next few months. Um, if you already know them, then I think that some there's going to be a change within this, within the next few months, okay? So, um, group three, that's really all I've got for you guys. That's your soulmate. I hope that you enjoyed this reading, and I hope it resonated with you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I see you next time, guys. We are going to move on now to group number four. <clears throat> All right, group four. Oops. Okay. So group four was the fluorite obelisk. Let's find out who your soulmate is, shall we? So the first card we have here is don't let your past hold you back. So right away I feel like this could be somebody who has experienced some really difficult things in their life. Somebody who possibly has some kind of childhood trauma or trauma related to past romantic relationships. Um, also I think... This could be somebody who maybe struggles a lot with self-doubt, a lack of self-esteem, a lack of confidence, but we also have a new start is coming. So there is this energy of like a new beginning, of like a, a rebirth. Um, I get the feeling that you guys probably already know this person. And there's been some... Well, okay, let me look at these other cards first. We have Don't Dim to Fit In. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? This is somebody, I think, who is in some way not entirely true to themselves. This is somebody who I think holds back on who they really are because they, they, they don't want to feel like they're different. They don't want to stand out too much. They, they want to just live a comfortable life without having a lot of attention on them and so they just sort of hold back on who they really are they hold back from expressing themselves they hold back on showing the world who they are as a person um and i think that is 
something that they've just gotten used to doing over time and at this point they might not even realize that they do it. We also have take a break. A life's work, not a season. Get off the treadmill. So this card is also kind of emphasizing to me that that feeling of you probably already know this person. I feel like you and this individual have had some history, you've had some experiences together, and something happened, and you guys are currently on a break. You probably are in a period of separation. Um, but the new start card is saying that, that that separation is going to come to an end, and a new beginning is going to happen for you guys. Um, we also have calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So I feel like you guys probably already know who I'm talking about here and you probably have been trying to manifest this person back into your life because you know that this person is your soulmate like this you just have this knowing this this your intuition has told you this you know and so you've been trying to manifest them back and I with this card being here I do think that's working uh, we also have the orphaned cards. This card talks about abandonment. This card talks about feeling um, left alone. It, it's very similar to the Five of Pentacles energy. Um, and also, interestingly, the number on this card is five. So the number five is associated with change. Um, just wanted to point that out there. So there is this energy of changes happening for this connection in the future. Um, also... I think that this person perhaps ghosted you in the past. Somebody was ghosted anyway. Or just, you know, somebody just walked away from the other person. And it could have been you, it could have been them. But there's this sense of, like, I just can't do this right now. That's what I'm hearing. I just can't do this right now. And it has nothing to do with you. Like, if you were, the, if they were the one to walk away, they didn't do that because of anything that you did or didn't do. They did that because they have a problem, you know? And they're just not great at communicating their feelings. And so, like I said, this is a person who really holds themselves back. They, I, I don't think that they like to put themselves out there. I don't think that they like to express their emotions too much because they it makes them feel vulnerable um and again i feel like that's because of past experiences that they've had um i get the sense that this person probably has experienced some kind of emotional abuse or manipulation in their past and it could have been from a previous partner or from parents or from friends when they were in school when they were young and I think that um, they have struggled with that a lot. And something about you, you know, when they met you, I think that they recognized that there was something special about the connection that you shared and so something about you just made them want to open up more but they but that kind of scared the shit out of them and so that could be partly why they walked away from you and it could be that you know they they took off because they knew that they had to fix themselves before they could be with you and again, they probably didn't communicate that very well, but you know, you just kind of have to, you just kind of have to give them a break here, give them a little slack, um, because this is somebody who's trying, I think. We also have the divine timing card. So again, divine guidance, the timing on this was not right. Your person had some things that they needed to address, some things that they needed to heal, some wounds that they needed to close. Um... And I think that's what they're working on right now. They're trying to right some of the wrongs that have happened to them. I, I, I feel like they're trying to cut some cords, like, energetically. Um, 
trying to create balance for themselves and stability within themselves and it's interesting because 11 is one of the soulmate numbers angel numbers and also we have the four of wands which is like the twin flame card um so this possibly could even be a twin flame situation um but we also have here the four of cups so there's this energy of disappointment pertaining to this connection so again that makes sense if you're not in touch with this person right now if somebody walked away there's this disappointment, there's this sadness, there's this uncertainty, what's going to happen? Are they ever going to come back? Am I ever going to hear from them again? Will we ever be together or do I need to just completely move on from this? Um, with the Four of Wands being here, this is like, this isn't over, you know? There's going to be a happy ending to this and I think that like marriage even is definitely on the table in the future. There's a lot of hope here with the star. This card's about hope. This card's about healing. This this connection can be healed. It can be fixed. And I think that it will be when the time comes for that to happen. But right now, I think your person is trying to fix themselves. We also have the devil card here, which the devil card can talk about toxic situations. It can talk about mental illness, um, addiction, uh, abusive relationships, anything, anything that's bad, nasty, um, anything that makes you feel stuck or trapped. This is the kind of energy that I think your person is trying to work through. Okay. Um, this also could be an indication that your person is, I want to say your person is a little bit kind of like, um, one of the, one of the previous groups I just did had this sort of energy to it. I think it was the last one, um, pile three. I feel like your person is, is pretty, um, attuned to their sexuality. They're not very shy about talking about that kind of thing. They're a little bit, <laughs> a little bit dirty sometimes. Um, but I feel like that's something that you kind of like about them. Um, and also I get the sense that your person is kind of funny, you know, like, this is somebody I think that would be able to make you laugh. This is somebody I think who really does have very pure intentions in life. This is somebody I think who wants to be happy, who wants to have that the family that they've always dreamed of having, who wants to have a happy relationship. Somebody, you know, they want to be with somebody that's going to make them feel good. They want to be with somebody that they can connect to. And basically, you know, they want to be with, like, their best friend. They want a partner who's going to who's gonna be able to give them that sense of security and that sense of belonging and being loved. And I, I think that's something they've never really experienced fully before. And I think that they can see you being that person for them. But they're trying to take care of some things first. Okay? And... Like I said, if you're trying to manifest this person back, I think it's working. You just got to be patient at this point because you can't manifest something that, you know, you can't manifest this person back if they're, if they're not ready yet. Um, so it's like, you know, spirit knows what you want. Spirit knows that this is something you want. And once, once your person's ready, they're going to be back. Um, and they're working hard, I think. I'm getting a I'm seeing tattoos with this person I'm seeing dark hair I'm seeing dark eyes facial hair <laughs> if it's you know if this is a more masculine individual definitely I feel like he would have facial hair um a very just kind of hard-working person a little bit old-fashioned maybe just in the sense that this would be a person who wants to just like maybe that maybe old fashioned is not the right word, but I feel like this is somebody who's just a hard worker who probably comes from a pretty working class family, a pretty working class background. Maybe not the most educated person, you know, maybe they quit after high school or 
you know, maybe didn't even finish high school for some of you, but, but like, being a, a lack of formal education doesn't mean that you're not intelligent. I feel like this person is still a smart person. You know, they're very empathetic. I'm getting a lot of empathy from this person. I'm getting um, a very loving, giving sort of vibe from this person. And I feel like this would be someone who is probably kind of tall and not super lean, but not... I want to say somebody who's who's got a little bit of fluff to them. You, you know, somebody who has... Um, <laughs> somebody who has enough that you can, like grab onto them. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not real thin. Um, <laughs> but, um, I feel like they're strong and I feel like they, again, I don't get the impression that this is a really career oriented person. I feel like this is a much more family oriented person. Like their family and their interpersonal relationships, like that's their primary focus in life. Um, it's another one of those deals where, like, some people live to work, other people work to live. That's, that's what this person is. They, they just work to live, <laughs> you know? Um, but, like, just, this person just feels so, so well-intentioned. But I think they also, again, have some self-esteem issues. Like, I, I think that they don't see themselves as being a very intelligent person. But they are. And they don't see themselves as having a ton of good qualities, but they do. Um, I just see this person kind of, like, kicking themselves sometimes, you know, saying, like, why am I so stupid? Or why do I do these things? Um, and it's just because they don't have the tools to deal with, you know, some of the emotions that they have. And they don't have the tools to process some of the things that they've been through. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, I, I feel like this is somebody who has just repressed the issues that they have faced in their past, the traumas that they have, you know, dealt with, um, rather than working through them. And so I think that meeting you kind of brought some of that stuff back to the surface. And now they're being forced to deal with that. Um, the situation will improve. Yep. You definitely know this person. If for some reason you don't know this person, this probably isn't your reading because I really feel like you already have met this person. So, um, no. Why is no here? <laughs> Why is no here? Oh, yeah, if, if this doesn't sound like anybody that you know, then this isn't your reading. That's what this is talking about. Okay, thanks for that. Um, so let's, let's see if we can't get a time frame for when this person might come back towards you. Because, I, like I said, I feel like they're probably not really in your life right now. We got romance. When is Pile 4's soulmate going to come back towards them? They have communicate clearly. So neither of these cards are giving me a specific time frame. However, what I am getting is that this is kind of a quick moving energy, these two cards. So I wouldn't be surprised if you heard from this person in the next couple of months. Um, I feel like they're gonna come back towards you and want be wanting to communicate with you and um, there's going to be an opportunity for you guys to, like, have that romantic relationship that maybe you tried to have in the past and it didn't quite work out. So, um, yeah, Pile 4, that's your reading. That's your soulmate. Um, I hope that this resonated with you and I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye! All right, the last pile, orange calcite.
let's see who your soulmate is. The first card that we have is don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. So right away, this could be a Leo that you're dealing with or just a fire sign in general. Aries, Sagittarius. Um, somebody who possibly is a little bit prideful, has a tendency to be a bit prideful. Um, and probably struggles with that a little bit. We also have balance, spirituality, and practicality. So you could also be dealing with a Pisces. Um, somebody who has Pisces in their chart, Sun, Moon, or Rising, whatever, Venus. Um, someone who... Okay. I'm getting that... This is somebody who has... A very, um, there's, there's some kind of, like, duality to this person. Like, they come across as a, being a very worldly individual, but there's also this side of them that's very spiritual. I feel like this is somebody who definitely believes in soulmates, who believes in, um, the paranormal, the supernatural, um, esoteric kinds of things they're interested possibly in like magic witchcraft religion um just spirituality in general but they might not seem like the person who would be interested in that kind of thing so it might surprise you a little bit when you learn about this aspect of their personality um we also have the star seed card what lights you up so what this card tells me is that this is a person who is going to very much be um, lit up <laughs> by you. I feel like this person is going to be very passionate about you, very, very, um, like, when they meet you, it's going to be like, I've got to have that person. That's, that's how they're going to feel about you. Like, they have to have you, and they're going to do whatever it takes to get you. Um, I feel like for some of you, it might take you a little bit to... Um, really open up to them, but I think they're going to stick with it. Like, I <laughs> I don't think this person's going to give up easily. We also have the Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. So there is some kind of higher purpose to this relationship. Um, there could be some sort of karmic lesson that you're meant to learn from this person. Um, we also have the Codependency card. Uh, addictions are affecting your romantic life. This could mean that you and this person, okay, it could be a sign that your person is someone who has struggled with addiction in the past, or it could mean that the relationship could become codependent if you aren't careful. Um... We also have time to go in the reverse, which is interesting because, you know, this card talks about walking away from something. And with it being in the reverse position, this is really a sign that this is something that even though it seems like it's over, it's really not over. It's going to, like, resurface again in the future. So that's kind of interesting. So this could mean that you already know this person, and or, or you've met them before, and, like, you probably haven't really been in each other's lives for a while, and this is a sign that the person's going to come back. Or if you... If that's not the case... It could mean that when you do get together with this person, there could be a period of time where you're going to not be together. It could be like you'll be together for a while and then there will be a period of separation or a period where you're going to be broken up or something. And then later on down the road, there will be a reconciliation. So that's kind of interesting. We also have the centering card. So this card to me is an indication that this person is going to have a lot to teach you. I feel like you're going to be um, kind of uh, 
I feel like this is going to be a relationship that's going to be different from others that you've had in the sense that it's going to present different kinds of challenges to you that you maybe never had to deal with before. Um, and like I said, I feel like this is really going to be a learning experience for you, which makes me think that it could possibly have a karmic element to it. Um, we also have the High Priestess card. Again, there's that element of spirituality um, that might be kind of surprising to you, but also, again, that energy of this has a greater purpose. This has a higher purpose. We have the um, death card here. This, tar this card talks about transformation and change. So there's something about this that's going to initiate some kind of transformation either for you and the other person or the connection itself is going to undergo some kind of change. Like I said, if you already know who I'm talking about and you're not together right now, that's going to change. Alternatively, if you are, if you haven't met this person yet, or if you're currently with them, then this change, that's going to change too. It's, it's like the relationship is going to change. It's going to end and then it's going to start over. It, it, it's kind of a weird, weird energy that I'm getting. Yeah. Cause we also have the full, so it's like a new beginning after this ending. Um, so the ending either has already happened or it will happen. And then the new beginning is going to come in. We also have the four of pentacles. This card talks about like holding on to something. It talks about interconnectedness. It's like, um, it's like, this is a connection that is going to persist. Um, and I feel like you are going to be a person that this, your soulmate is never going to be able to completely let you go, no matter what happens between you. I feel like this is going to be one of those things where you're always going to be on each other's hearts to some extent, even if you haven't spoken in years, um, which can be a good and a bad thing. Um, but I feel like this is someone who could be very, um, somebody who could be kind of jealous, kind of possessive of you, not, uh, and it's not like they try to be manipulative or controlling, it's just that they, I, I, I feel like, are very protective and they just want to have you to themselves, and that could play into this codependency energy here. Um, like I said, this could be something that could become codependent if you guys aren't careful. Um, we also have the devil card. So this can talk about situations where you feel trapped, toxic situations, toxic relationships. Um, can talk about addiction as well, just like this card. But uh, again, there's this, it's, this card is really like a warning. Both of these are really like warnings to you that if you are not careful, this could be something that will become toxic to you, to both of you, um, because I just feel like this could easily evolve into something that could be very possessive, very controlling, very um, just unhealthy and painful, and that's going to end up hurting you both. Um, so the thing is that you... I feel like this is going to be a, a relationship that's going to be very passionate. I feel like there's going to be a lot of intense, like, sexual energy between you and this person, a lot of physical chemistry, and that could be something that you're going to have to um, be careful with, not allow that to take control over the relationship, because I think when you do that, that's when this toxicity is going to surface. Um, we have the let go card here. This card is kind of like, you know, emphasizing that message of like, there's going to be some point during this journey with this person where you're going to have to like let them go if you haven't already, which is interesting. Um, let's see if we can't get anything else here. I'm seeing a... I'm seeing somebody who has lighter hair, possibly blonde or red hair, 
and lighter colored eyes like blue or gray. We have the no card and we have compromise. So definitely I think this could potentially be a relationship that, you know, again, if you're not careful, this could be something that would be fraught with conflict or disagreements. And there's going to definitely be a need for compromise between you. And this could be partly what the lesson is going to be for you, like how to deal with that, like how to, how to um, face, you know, these types of challenges. Um, cause like I said, I feel like this definitely is going to be a learning experience for you. Like that's what this relationship is meant to be. Um, and with the no card, no, with an exclamation point, um, I kind of get the sense that this is not, it's not going to go quite how you, how you're going to expect it to go. I kind of feel like some of you might not be super into this person at the start and you might think, mm, you know, I'm not really into them. I think I'm just going to leave it alone, but then something's going to happen that's going to totally change your mind. You might find this person really growing on you, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, your expectations are really going to be subverted within this relationship in some way or another. Okay, um, I feel like this person is quite intelligent in some areas, and in others, they <laughs> are not super intelligent. Um, someone, I feel like, who is very smart when it comes to tech, like machinery, cars, that kind of thing. Um... We have get more information. You might feel like this person is keeping things from you. This could be somebody who is going to be very slow to reveal information about themselves. This could be someone who's very guarded, okay? Um, so that's something to be aware of. Let me see if I can get a time frame for when this person might come into your life if you don't know them already or when this when this change is going to happen because like I said if you already know them then there is going to be some kind of change occurring when is this change going to happen we have asked for help from others that's very informative we have meditation brings answers and within the next few months so Either you're going to meet this person in the next few months, or if you already know them, then some big change, some kind of ending is going to occur within the next few months. Okay. And if you're currently with this person, then that change could be a separation. If you're already separated from this person, then that change could be a new beginning. Okay. It's really going to just depend on where you're at with this individual. Um, when you're watching this. Okay, guys, so, um, that's really all the messages that I have for you guys. I hope that this is helpful, and I hope that this resonated with you. Um, thank you so much for watching Pile 5. That's your soulmate. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that I see you next time. Where am I, where am I trying to put this? Okay. Uh... Yeah, uh, I will be back on Monday with another reading for the week, and uh, I hope to see you then. See ya!